Hey friends, this is Abhishek from TechWirus and in this video I'll be talking about how you can assemble your own gaming PC for 2015. So before starting this video let me make you one thing very clear that assembling PC is really easy. You don't need any external support, support from any other friends or any other technicians. Okay, so one thing you must remember that these particular electronic things, motherboard, graphics card and processors, these are really delicate. So you should be very careful while installing your PC. Okay, so let me show you all the components one by one so that you can take a reference from this particular assembly and you can make your own gaming PC. To start with the first component, I have Cooler Master G750M power supply unit. This comes with five years of warranty and costs you 8500 Indian rupees. The next component I'm using here is LG DVD Writer. This is not so important, you can skip this. The next component I'm using is Intel Core i7 processor. This is one of the best processor in 2014 because the heat sink of this processor is too good. The model number is 4790K. It is clocked at 4 GHz and costed me 21,000 Indian rupees. The best part of this processor is you can clock up to 5 GHz because this is the K edition. The next component what I'm using in my gaming PC is DDR3 Vengeance RAM. This has got black heat sinks so the performance of this particular RAM is too good and it comes with 10 years of warranty. It costed me around 6000 Indian rupees. The next component is ASUS Z97 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. This motherboard is really great for overclocking purposes and it comes with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The next component is the graphics card. The graphics card which I am using is GDX 970 and the price for this graphics card is 27,000 Indian rupees. Now, to tell you more about this graphics card, that this was the uh, most anticipated graphics card for 2014 and I really admit that NVIDIA has done something great this year and made such a good graphics card at this price range because the performance is equally good as it is with GTX 980. Now the next component is the hard drive. I'm using a black edition hard drive from Western Digital. It's 1 TB hard drive and it has costed me 6000 rupees. The next one is the Dell Full HD LED. It is 23 inch LED. The model number I'll tell you. The model number is S2340LC and it has costed me around 12,000 Indian rupees. The next component I have used in this PC is the low budget speakers. It's from Creative but I admit the quality and the sound is good from this speaker. It has costed me 1700 Indian rupees. The next one is Cooler Master Cabinet. I'm using a light 431 plus Cooler Master for my gaming PC. It has got a uh, really good ventilation and the big fan with blue LED. It looks great. And it's got glass on the left hand side so you can see all the components functioning inside. Last but not the least I have these pairs of keyboard and mouse it is wireless mouse but I won't be using for my gaming PC this is just for configuration purpose and it has cost me around 1500 to 1600 that's all so these are the components what I'm be using for assembling my gaming PC soon so please stay tuned I'm just trying to build the gaming PC for you okay to start with we need three components first one is processor Second one is the RAM and third one is of course the motherboard. Now first of all you need to have motherboard box. You don't have to throw it away. Use your motherboard box as the base. Let me open it. Now make sure that you are grounded properly. So that your static energy does not affect the motherboard. If you want, you can take out all the cables and the IO shield. 
you may want to refer the manual I can take this out remove it out of the plastic okay. so few people uh, assemble it in the case and some assemble outside the case my preference is I should assemble outside the case because it's more easier to place the processors and RAMs okay so first of all I need to install the processor so let me take out the processor so this is the heatsink this is the stock heatsink which comes with the processor and it has processor keep the box aside need to be careful with these fans or these aluminium strips because they are delicate if one is broken the heat sink will not work properly okay and let me install the processor first you can see on the top of motherboard that's written okay so let me show you how to install the processor now okay uh, let me remove the processor out of the cover you can take this out like this and you should not touch this part of processor these are very delicate just hold it from side easily then you can install it on the motherboard let me keep aside and first unplug the motherboard's spray okay so you need to push it this side then you can lift it up then you just put it up and you can see you have the processor bay where you need to check for the right corner okay now here is the processor you need to check this arrow should be bottom left and there are two small cuts you can see this one and this one it should be exactly the same way how the motherboard is having so you can see here and here you can always refer to your manual where it shows how to install it so it should fit in exactly and just move left and right to see if processor is not moving then then close this you can remove this one just close this up make sure it's tight and here this is how you have installed your i7 processor on motherboard so this was quite easy okay friends now i'll be installing until uh, stock cool cooler this will be on the processor and you can see the uh, heat gel is was already applied i've just tried to put it on so it spread all across you don't have to worry uh, the stock gel the heat gel is good enough so you don't have to apply any external gel now to show you what all things are there there are four knobs and these knobs are actually going to get into the motherboard and there will be a click sound so that you will understand the heat sink is locked okay now how you have to do this let me zoom the video just keep all these things on the four sides just 
make sure that all the uh, four sides are on the pin and you are not missing any of the sides because you have to press hard and it will get into this. So see, just fold like this, both diagonals and press, you will see a click sound and again press, and again a click sound. So press diagonally. So this will install the process of fan heat sink on its place. Now you have to find where you need to put this particular fan cable. So it will be most probably on the right hand side of your processor slot. Okay. This is here. I'll put it this and it's inside. Now you can just put the wire down. Okay. So the heat sink has been installed properly on the ASUS motherboard. Now the second thing what we are going to do here is installing the RAM. So I have Corsair Vengeance 8 GB RAM. So if I'm installing only one RAM, you need to make sure that you have to use the second slot from the processor. That's the best place where you need to put the RAM. So let me zoom the video how to put the RAM. It's very simple actually. Remove this clip, like put it, uh, pull it outside and make sure that this particular gap is exactly in the same way where it is in the motherboard. Just put it like this. Put it in the slot. And you just have to press it a bit hard. There will be a click sound. It means RAM is installed properly. Okay, now we have installed processor, heatsink, CPU fan and RAM. Now it's time to check my motherboard and all these components if they are working fine before putting into the cabinet. I will use my power supply unit, it's from Cooler Master and I will check if all the components are working or not. And then I have to use this big pin. This is actually a motherboard power socket. So you have to put it here. Let me zoom the video. You can see. This is the place where you need to put in the motherboard socket. Just make sure this particular click kind of thing is on the same direction where there is a click on the motherboard. And otherwise also this will not go in the opposite direction. Just press it a bit hard and it will go inside. Now this is the motherboard power. Now you have to put CPU power. So this kind of cable, this is actually 8 pin and this will be used for CPU power. So where is the CPU power? Let me zoom the video. So here on the right hand side is the CPU power. So put it like this. This will lock. Now I don't have to put any other thing. Just make sure the fan is not blocked because it can damage your fan if the wire comes in between. Alright, so you can see uh, we have good gap here. Okay, now I will put the power cable into power supply unit. There is the power supply cable and I will put it here. Alright, now you need to do one more thing. I have to connect this particular motherboard with my monitor so that I can see how is the boot process happening. So I'll take the HDMI cable from my monitor motherboard. So let me show you the entire setup. This is the motherboard and the HDMI cable is connected to my monitor and I have USB wireless mouse and keyboard. So what I'll do, I'll connect the nano receiver of my USB and keyboard. So it's just, I have to put it inside this, All right? Now I'll power on the power supply unit. Okay, now you can see in the motherboard, you have power button itself. If I can zoom and show you here and you can see 
red color light is blinking or it's glowing now I have to just press this button okay now you can see there was obstructed by the wire so it was giving sound so you have to be very careful that these wires are not getting stuck here all right so this is for testing purpose i'll properly remove the wire and put it all across now you can see the cpu fan is running there is a red led which says boot underscore device LED let me switch on the monitor okay. on monitor I've got UEFI BIOS utility and it shows me the CPU voltage temperature motherboard temperature is 29 CPU temperature is 38 if I can zoom and show you and it should go approximately to 50 or 45 degrees Celsius without any load and you can see the fan is also working CPU fan and any other fans I have not installed so they are not working so this is how you can verify if motherboard and processors they are working properly and of course the power supply unit okay so I have checked the basic components here now what I'll do I'll put all these setup into the motherboard and I'll show you how to install those things okay friends now I have the cabinet and what I'll be doing I've already actually installed the DVD ROM here so I'll just quickly tell you in this particular cabinet how I have installed so there is a gap below you can put in your hand here and you can just pull it outside and when you pull this this particular panel will come out and there are like few things you can break this you have to just twist it and bend it and then put the DVD ROM inside that's it and there is a filter you have to just put it out and you can remove this okay. this was the basic thing so I have tightened this what I will do I will remove the screws I'll remove this one as well slide it back this will come out and this one also slide it this will come out alright so I have also installed the IO shield uh, it's very simple to install you just have to put the IO shield from inside and it will be locked at its position okay now let me zoom the video and show you what, what all cables are there inside and how to install this okay so uh, we have these bunch of wires here so I'll be explaining each of them one by one so you will get these wires in most of the cabinets and they will be all same okay so first me first of all the most complicated wire I'll show you okay so in my hand now you can see there are a bunch of small wires and a pin set of pin so this particular thing is like a connector which I have got in my motherboard and it says multiple things let me zoom and show you what all it says it says a high hard disk drive LED SDD LED plus minus power ground and reset ground and the other side also there are multiple things like speaker ground plus 5 volt all those things now what I have to do is I have to match these details with the cable which is coming here same thing like HDD LED anyone you can put plus minus it doesn't matter then power and ground so I have to put power here then restart and ground I'll put restart like this and other side this is power LED minus power LED plus so I pinned it like this and I don't have speaker ground and plus five things so I've left it blank all right so once you do this this particular thing will go directly into your motherboard and it will make your life easy to install these cables 
Alright, the next one is the audio cable. So if we can show you, you can see this is HD audio, it's AC97, I think it's for mic. So both we have to plug in the audio part of the motherboard. And then we have USB 2.0 uh, connectivity with the front USB panel and the last one is USB 3.0 this is huge cable because you have good data transfer with USB 3.0 all right so these are the cables now what I'll do I'll uh, put the motherboard here and I'll show you how to arrange the cables as well as install the cables all right now uh, I've already installed the IO shield here I have to put the motherboard into the cabinet okay so here's the motherboard I have left CPU fan and other things like what I've installed out of the box and I have to put it inside so that it fits into the IO shield just keep it up and put a little bit tilted just press it softly should go and fit into the IO shield just make sure by seeing outside if all the ports are visible and there are multiple screw points on the motherboard that should match with the screw points in your cabinet let me show you how does it look so uh, these are the screw points here one two three four five six seven eight we have eight screws I have to put in all those screws properly so I'll use these screws alright so I have uh, screwed most of the screws on the motherboard and the cabinet and few few of the screws were not fitting in so you should not force hard to put all the screws whatever screws are fitting in normally just put those screws now let me move to the cabling part now so these are the front cables so I'll put it at the last first what I'll do I will put the hard drive into the cabinet here's the hard disk and there are, these are the simple unlock and put you don't have to use screws here Let's unlock this and push your hard drive the back should be this side okay so let me uh, put the hard drive cable in the power supply unit I have this kind of cable it has multiple power supplies for the hard drive and the CD-ROM first one okay let me use in the hard drive see like this So, and I'm really sorry guys, uh, this camera is not out of focus, I have to focus it manually every time, so please bear with me. Now, the end will go into your power supply unit, so I'll keep it aside. Now I'll put the SATA cable for my hard disk and the DVD writer. Put it like this, okay, this will lock up and this one will go into the motherboard I'll put it at the last uh, let me put SATA cable for the hard drive now I'll just put it like this and this I will connect at the last the second one. keep it aside okay the power and the data thing is done for my hard drive and CD drive now let me connect the power supply unit to this cabinet okay let me uh, put the power supply unit in this cabinet now so this is a 750 watt power supply unit from cooler master so there are multiple ways to put this 
power supply unit either you can keep the fan up or you can keep the fan down so the, the basic difference between up and down like if you're putting the fan up the air from uh, the cabinet will be sucked inside this power supply unit and it will be thrown outside and if you put it down the fresh air will come up inside this power supply unit and it will be thrown out so um, it is really difficult to tell which one is good uh, but if you want to keep your power supply unit cool then always put it in the down direction okay so I'll do uh, a down option I'll put the power supply unit downwards and then I'll keep it inside and this is very easy like you just have to place it at the bottom and then make sure that the pins are in the same way where you want to screw okay so I'll screw these things uh, there are four screws which has come with the power supply unit so I'll use these screws okay so I have screwed all the four uh, screws into the power supply unit and it's now fixed here let me move to the cabling part of power supply unit I'll put it again down and I'll do the cabling okay so put all the cables that side and from this side turn this power computer from this side one by one you can put these cables so you know this uh, big one is for the motherboard and this 12 volt is for the processor I'll put all these cables and I'll show you how does it look okay so you can see that I have installed or I have put the cables for the motherboard and the processor so both are in their socket now what I'll be doing I'll be installing the SATA drive cables so these cables are easy to identify uh, SATA is written on these things and you have the side ports that side and these SATA will go into that particular thing and uh, th these are the front panel LEDs restart and those things so at the end of the motherboard you will see you have these pins so it will be mentioned here you have to just put in straight forward and you are all set to go okay the next one is the audio one so audio is also mentioned here the side you have to put this into audio okay. and then these are the power sockets which will go into your power supply unit and you can put it easily here so after connecting all those things I'll show you how does it look okay so I have installed most of the cables now and uh, the last thing is the graphics card what I'll be installing now I'll put the cabinet like this and I'll just I'll be using this GTX 970 and let me take out this one okay so I have uh, ASUS GTX 970 graphics card first I'll remove the security clip okay now you can see uh, we have two more here Let's remove these two also but I won't be using uh, the DVI or S display port I'll be using HDMI so it's okay I can keep it now you can see we have uh, these are the SLI jump jumpers if you're using multiple card you have to remove this I'm not using multiple card I'll just keep it as it is and here is our 8 pin socket so this one will be used by our power supply unit let me put this card into the slot okay so before this I forgot to remove the um, safety clip here I'll just remove this one now I'll try to put this card okay so I'll put the screws here to make this card stable okay now card is firmly fit on the 
motherboard all right uh, now you can see i have installed the graphics card and uh, i have put in the power cable and uh, everything is set now what i'll do i'll try uh, to switch on the power supply unit and check if everything is working or not so let me switch it on and i'll switch on the power okay now you can see the blue led fan is lighting up there's a white light here this means the graphics card is working fine you can see on the monitor the display has come and i have used the output from the graphics card you can see this is the graphics card output and on the screen it's getting loaded it says no keyboard it'll take some time to start up okay now you can see this is the asus uefi console and everything is working fine cpu fan is working the led fan in the front is working and the graphics card is working so at the last what i'll do i have to do the cable management i'll put all the cables back and i'll tie it up and then i can close the pc all right let me switch on this pc okay now you can see the blue led fans are glowing and we have all the leds and different things different ports are glowing in you can see a motherboard q code is also being seen here okay on on the monitor you can see the computer has booted up actually it will go into the bios settings and other things because i've not installed the operating system all right so this is e uefi bios utility from asus and you can see we have temperature initiating at 45 degrees celsius 46 degrees celsius motherboard 30 degrees celsius and we can see our hard disk cd-rom all are detected and both the fans are working i have to install one more fan but if not two fans are there and both are working and uh, you can see this display is coming through the graphics card so everything is working okay so this was my video for computer assembly i hope you liked my video please share and do subscribe my channel have a nice day bye bye